In this video, you go from here to here. And you even get trains too. Hi, welcome back to Chattermore Railway. I'm Charlie. A bit of wiring, a bit of testing, running some trains. But it is an epic. Get yourself a cup of tea and some biscuits. If you've got any comments, then let me know down below. In a previous video, I'd made this board um, as the a baseboard uh, to go underneath the main uh, board to hold my Digitrax equipment and stuff. And then realising that I really wouldn't be able to get in underneath to maintain anything, and rather than not use the, the slide-out drawer, I've gone for a wall-mounted option. And you can see by these red raw plugs along there, um, I changed my mind once I kind of drilled and put another batten in because I wanted to shave some off the bottom to make a shelf. So my idea is this would go here. And then on this shelf would go these type of um, power and Digitrax components would sit on the shelf and kind of sit up here. And then all the main electronics would go on the top. And hopefully that may make some kind of sense. Whilst down B and Q, when I bought uh, some stuff this morning, um, if you remember, I mentioned about the possibility of having a system where I can turn the power off in the room. And for a meagre 12 pounds, you can pick up one of these radio controlled switches with a remote control. So if I just show you how this works, and you might find this of interest. I'm not necessarily recommending this at this stage because um, I've only had this one, oh, bought it today, but I bought another set a couple of days ago and they seemed okay. So I'll show you what it does and how I program it. Now this little remote has uh, four channels, A, B, C, D, and also an on, A, B, C, D, and an off. So you can turn on channel a and or off, B and similarly all the way down, or you can turn them all on off in a one-er. Also in the box, you get two of these little plugs. So now you need to program the plug to match with the remote. And if in the past you've had problems with this kind of stuff, it certainly isn't the case today. So you pop one of the two um, plugs into the socket, turn it on, the little red light flashes, and I actually want this to work on button C. So I press C, and you hear a little click, and that's it programmed. So if I press C again, it'll go off, on, off. Couldn't be easier. And just to demonstrate, here's one of my, um, what should we call it, favorite tools, my Dremel. So if I turn C on, and if I turn C off, on, off, or on, and then all off, so everything goes off, including one of my other lights <laughs> that's on channel A. Right, let's turn C off, there we go. Um, straightforward piece of kit, easy, uh, easy to program. Um, as I said, two of these little um, plug jobbies and the remote for 12 quid. And as you noticed earlier, one of the other lights is also um, on channel A. There it is, and on. So it just makes perfect sense. And when you leave your room, um, all you need to do is turn all off, as it were. Everything kills the railway room and you're good to go. Just switch the main lights out as you leave. Kind of makes sense, really. Yeah, £12. Anyway, um, if you're interested, drop me a, a, a comment in a month or so's time just to let you know how I've got on, because if it turns out, I don't, I'm not recommending these, don't run to B&Q and buy them, it might turn out the garbage in the last a week, um, but uh, so, you know, give it a month or so and, and ask. There we go. And what else have I bought down B&Q today? Well, I bought three little brackets um, to hold this shelf up, which will obviously sit around about here, and two surge power extension leads. One is a six way and the other one's a four way, and what I thought of doing was these would then mount on the board and then all the electrical bits would plug into there and then that would then plug into the socket onto that little B&Q clever little radio switch. 
sort of makes sense. <laughs> I don't know why I keep saying it makes sense. The height of the shelf will be such that I can use the space underneath to store these really useful boxes because they're really useful and I have a unhealthy fetish for them. So what I shall quickly do is um, use these brackets, pop this shelf up and then get back to you. I'm sure we've all put shelves up before but just get a braddle once you've marked out where the holes should be and just a pre, not pre-drill but just make a small hole and then it's just left to me and Mr Makita to put these brackets on. next to no time. Well, that was simple enough. Yes, nice and strong, nice and strong. I had thought about putting a lip on it, um, you know, in case anything falls off, but um, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it, shall we? Right, what goes on here? And this is the start of the Digitrax kind of nightmare, really. And there are various um, components which sort of cross-connect. All of the cables obviously will need, uh, need shortening. And then this is the main cable that goes up or oh, on the old Chadwick. Um, this went up onto the, uh, as it plugged in underneath the board. Um, so now I'll make an arrangement. I think that we'll take this over to here. So if I ever need to disconnect the whole system, I can and leave the board intact. You know, if we're doing sort of fault finding or whatever, I don't really want to start undoing wires. So using this old, um, what do you call it? Chocolate box push-in connector will give me an easy, uh, an easy break. And then from here, we need to then try to work logically into the rest of the, the electronics of which I'll go through one at a time. Um, in the meantime, first, I think I'll pop in those um, extension leads that I mentioned and, uh, and see how we get on. Now, as usual, I'm a bit picky with my extension leads. And I bought these from Screwfix. And this is a, um, whoops, a six-way connector. If I plug him in, turn it on. You can see the lights here, hopefully, that the power is on and the surge protection circuit's on. And when you turn them on, they've got an LED, so you can see which ones are lit. And then I shall either mount this here, or I shall mount it underneath, and then drop the leads down. But we'll, uh, we'll see how that shapes up, and how many components I can get right across the top here. Also worth a mention is the fact that um, these extension leads have holes in the back for a screw mount so obviously you just pop some screws into your timber and then drop this into place and if you got hold them up near nice and tight then this will stay still. I don't really want one that just sort of flaps about. Time's now moved on and I've fitted both of the six-way extension leads underneath the shelf. I actually took back the, the four-way extension lead uh, because I could get the six in there and I thought well um, for an extra fiver, it might be worth those extra two sockets and um, screw fix are only too willing to swap it for, for the other one. I've also popped on the shelf some of the Digitrax components and also on the far left hand side there, there's a DC 
power supply which I'll use um, for some of the DC driven accessories such as point motors. When I first put the original Chadwick TMD together uh, I used this kind of, um, what would you call it, quick, quick release kind of chocolate block uh, to power the layout up but ridiculously I would put the power end with the pins which means if you power it up and this is disconnected and you drop it on something metal then you're going to get a short so this time I've kind of thought about it, done it the right way so the power is on the sockets so this will go up on the board here and then when I want to power it up well this is this will always stay in but if I want to undo this for a bit of fault finding or whatever when I take this out obviously there will be no bare connectors because if you had it the other way around then these bare connectors will, might well be carrying your power supply your DC voltages and all that sort of stuff so if you're going to use these um, then try, try to make sure you do it the right way around as opposed to the way I did it originally there we are. these are very good connectors and they're available from quite a few model, modelling outlets and squirestools.com sell them I think this is the 10 amp uh, size there is a 6 amp slightly smaller um, but if, I mean I bought the 6 amp as well but I would always tend to go for the larger one because it's kind of easier to wire up and everything else um, so there we are so that's going to go up into this corner here and I will tidy up this wiring I think one piece of electronics that's worth explaining to you is this board called a PM42 from Digitrax. PM I think stands for power management and you can use PM42s or their equivalent I'm sure other decent companies make these because when you if you use them on your layout you're able to split your, split your layout into power districts and these four relays um, produce power in, into four separate sections so for me I can have my inner loop my outer loop my branch line and my fiddle yard all on a different circuit of course it does mean you know, much more wiring but if you hit a point with a train going the wrong way and against the point and everything stops dead obviously all the sound shuts down and every loco on your layout will stop well not on this because only because on this one you'll only lose the one circuit such as the uh, the outer loop or the inner loop so that's how it kind of works it looks more complicated than it is um, and this <laughs> dread, dreadful piece of wiring here um, it's, it's what you've got is your is your earth or your common coming in your your negative coming in your life coming in and because I need four of each four of these cables coming out I've had to loop them across now if you saw last week's video which should be up here um, I mentioned about a new um, terminal block and <laughs> it's like it's like the toilet rolls in a current crisis Amazon had sold out with them uh, from very very quickly so obviously quite a lot of guys uh, thought that was a good idea um, so the 12 ways were sold out but I think there was eight and six ways and hopefully they've got some more because the way they work is you can just use a um, like a buzz bar uh, shorting link across the top and if you haven't seen the video click the link um, and hopefully it makes sense so you've got the power coming in on four strands and then it comes back out on four strands so you've got the first circuit the second circuit the third and the fourth and it really is quite simple there's a bit of soldering to do but you could buy something called a breakout board um, which makes it much simpler but the breakout board's about 35 quid um, but there we go anyway this is a pm42 if you're thinking of, of power management then give Jer De jeremy a ring from digitrains um, because he'll give you an unbiased point of view just because I've, I've knelt at the altar of Digitrax he might say well there's a much better one now available from Lens or whatever and he'll give you a, a much more unbiased opinion and these last two wires I think these are 12 volts DC so what I'm going to do next is um, I'm going to wire this in up into here and, uh, and all this and then after that I'll be able to power up this side of the layout and perhaps start running a couple of test trains wish me luck in case you didn't see last week's video here's that terminal block I was talking about and you get five sets of terminals like this and also uh, five red and five black of these sort of uh, jumper contacts you just loosen off you just whip off the um, 
the cover which is numbered 1 to 12 and um, loosen off the screws and then pop on uh, this jumper and then obviously all the contacts are the same uh, of the same power feed so they, you know you just put your power in and you can come off of all these 12 contacts and here's one where I've actually cut up the bridging pieces so you've got six red terminals and six black and then you can have your feed and return on the same uh, terminal block so what do we here have here then well here's the um, the the feed as I mentioned coming in from underneath both the the feed the return and the unearth and with this terminal block I've cut it into uh, three lots of four so you've got your red feed your black feed and an earth feed coming into four different channels what I can do now is with that PM42 I can start to trim all these cables down and get those feeder cables fed up into this terminal block I need to put some distance behind the panel from um, the timber so what I do is I get these small round if you like ferrules um, and all, all they really are is larger chocolate block um, the, the kind of tubing on the top and all I've done from these from the very large ones is cut them with a Stanley knife and then pop them behind where the screw will go to give me some distance to keep this off of the timber and this is that larger uh, terminal block where I used to cut off these ferrules so you can see that's sort of the size of those um, I don't really use these so it was just a case of trying to utilize something that I had to hand I'm going to leave a little bit of slack in these cables because uh, many people have turned around and said after last week's video that I ought to be using spade or actually fork connectors for these cables and perhaps using ferrules um, rather than just twist the wires and shove them in the holes um, they have a good point I have ordered uh, some ferrules and uh, the spade connectors and they'll be here on Wednesday so I may well replace some of these uh, when they arrive uh, but in the meantime I'll wire these bits up so you can uh, see how I'm getting on well, it's not necessarily the, ne the neatest job I've ever done but uh, I can always tidy it up when those ferrules and spade, uh, spade connectors arrive Okay, just give me a pinch up. Right. So now it's just these eight cables, which are the um, the power out from the PM42, and that's in held solid with those spacers. I forgot to mention but it's probably obvious I've just used some green and yellow earthing tape over that terminal so obviously you can't you can see the red underneath but uh, just so it makes it easy to uh, to realize which terminal strip that is now I'm installing four terminal blocks one per district to take the power from the PM42 out to all the circuits on the railway so all these cables are long enough to reach these I did check that beforehand the uh, shortest cable was this red one as long as it could reach the there uh, sorry the, the the most awkward one to get to was obviously this one here but we could reach that with the longest red so I now necessarily divide these these six between these and we should be good to go not the neatest job I've ever seen but hey there we go 
So one, two, three, four, all the reds and the blacks all matching. Now we need to label them. Now I did mention earlier something about a breakout board which you could use on the PM42 to make it easier than all these contacts you're having to be soldered. Well, traditionally this is a BDL168 and as you can see there are dozens, well, not dozens, but um, there are about, I think it's about 18 or 19 uh, sort of soldered cables on here um, and it's not that difficult to do because these little blue fittings do actually come away so you can kind of build it on the bench rather than do it in situ but you can buy this breakout board and there's the breakout board fitted in place of this soldered affair and with the breakout board you've just got a set of terminals and then you can just pop your, your wires in there and it does make it much more simple but of course there's always a cost to these things and these breakout boards I think are about 35 pounds a go um, I will use this one here with a breakout board on this board, on <laughs> lots of boards, um, and I'll whack this on here. I'm not going to go into the, uh, the depths of uh, block detection during this video, um, just to say that um, I do need this board, this installed, to connect up this end of those, of those lines. So that will go up here, um, but I will use this um, affair uh, on further on down the layout where space isn't such um, such an issue so th just that's the simple things is you either pay 35 quid and make life easy for yourself or you make up one of these which takes I don't know perhaps an hour an hour or two um, as long as you get it right then it's no big deal but if money isn't such an issue then 35 quid anyway what I'm going to do now is I will install this BDL 168 and I'm also going to install something called a PR3 um, which enables all this lot to talk to a computer at a later, uh, later date. Um, it's just that I need to get these things kind of sized up, if that makes sense. So I'll whack these up and then get back to you. Well, it's now the following day, if that makes sense. <laughs> Wouldn't be the day before, would it? Um, so, as you can see, I've done um, a bit more wiring. I've put the BDO 168 and the uh, PR3 in and a few cables. And I'll just explain to you which ones these are. Firstly, coming out of the Digitrax controller is the LocoNet cable and this daisy chains between each of the components and then goes off onto the layout. Sadly, I've made a mistake here because I also need to get two cables into this PR3 so this will have to come down because I physically can't get the cables in because I put them too close. We live and learn. Um, the rest of these cables are a bit loose and the reason for that is is because they're going to go on the underside of the board that's going to sit on top and a quick run through these cables so we have coming from the inner um, and the outer um, terminal blocks we've got the power feeds that go off to run um, the points and the accessories and that kind of stuff um, coming into here into the BDO 168 are all the red wires so those are the these three red uh, these two red cables and they are for one from the outer and one from the inner lines so they're obviously separated and then there's only three piece of pieces of track that come off of this board so there's one in zone a and two in zone b and that's the first half of this board up the other end of the layout there's another bdl 168 which runs the rest of the the board that you'll see later um, and that's really all I've got to say about this is I know it's a bit of a mess but as I said the, the a board will sit on top but it's kind of in and, in and working I don't actually need to power up the BDL 168s with um, 12 volts DC because we're not doing block detection we're just kind of making trains work and then when I throw the switch it puts power on the track so let's go and see if the trains will run well, I'm pleased to say the electricity gods have been with me today because if I power up these trains... Clearly they're working. Now I mentioned, I keep mentioning about this P3 
PM42, the power management tool. So what I intend to do now is run both trains in that direction and then short out one of the tracks and hopefully the other train should keep working. Uh, this isn't something I've already, already tried out by the way, okay? We're just cuffing it. So hopefully if I put that across those tracks, it will stop this one, but not that one. Okay, wish me luck. So I don't actually need to go cranking along at speed with these now. So there goes the warship into the siding. And then if I, sh if I short out the warship's track, hopefully the DMU will keep running. Well, that clearly wasn't embarrassing enough. Um, I think what it is, the PM42 requires 12 volts DC. And guess what? Yeah, you're right. I didn't put the 12 volts DC in. So I shall wire up a power source and then we'll carry out that embarrassing uh, evolution once more. Well, that's honesty for you, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, with power applied to the PM42, and if I put these on about 10 each, and then I short out one of the tracks, and then hopefully you can see that the warship continues on its travels. And then similarly, if I set the warship down, the DMU carries out on its travels. So, a success. And similarly, this outside track, which is part of the inner circuit, if I shut this one down, the warship continues. And that's the beauty of having this um, PM42. So we have some success. We have locomotives that work. Um, <laughs> it's been an absolute nightmare, hasn't it? One thing I'd like to show you is a very interesting tool that I bought from Train Tech. And all it is, is this small LED. And then if you pop it on the track to see who have track power, you get the two LEDs, you know, the two lights, the, uh, the yellow and the orange. And it's absolutely brilliant. And if I were to leave that on there and now shut down that, um, short out that track again, obviously the LED is going to go off. And I don't know if you can hear that, there is a, a clicking from the PM42 as it deals with that short. Another interesting feature that I like about the Digitrack system is you can power the points separately, the point motors, separately from the track. So you don't have to use track feed to change the points. That you might not think that's a big deal. But if I set off that DMU nice and slowly, and then I set off this warship nice and slowly, and the point is set against the warship. So the warship, uh, the DMU continues on its travels, but the warship is stuck and the PM42 is clicking away because it can hear, uh, it obviously knows there's a short. Now that point is point number 17. And if I change point set point number 17, switch 17, throw, whoops, close. So there's the point changing over and then the loco goes on its way. Because a lot of the time you can't do this with, with um, points, you then have to come in with the hand of God and remove the loco from uh, the frog to allow the point motor to change over. So if you do make a mistake, you can just change, switch the point and then the loco goes on its way. And all is well with the world. The other thing that may seem obvious is to keep some notes. I mean, good notes are essential and in the long run, they'll save you hours should anything go wrong. Onward. One other thing I haven't mentioned is cable sizes. And those on the other side of the pond, please excuse me because I know you work in AWG, which is I think is American wire gauge. But over here in Europe, we use a different uh, sort of sizing method. <clears throat> so, for the very short drops of low current 
drawer, I use something that we call 702, which is made up of seven strands of 0.02 millimetre copper. Um, and it's a very common size, so 702 for the short runs. Um, 1602 is rated, oh sorry, that's at two, 702 is at two amps. Um, 16 strands of 02 is rated at four amps. So if you're gonna do reasonable uh, runs of, even though it's low power, you know, if, I, if I go beyond four foot, then I'm gonna switch from 702 to 1602 because you'll get some kind of a, a voltage drop along the um, length of the cable. So um, I go to 1602 and also most of the cables around the board um, are, uh, are 1602 because they're pulling four amps. My larger uh, workstation, the controller, kicks out up to eight amps, but those eight amps that are going into four districts is kind of two amps each, really, so that's more than adequate. And um, for l very long buses and that kind of thing, then there is something called 3202, which is rated at 10 amps. The main thing is you're aware of the power you currently draw with that particular controller and also where you're going to go in the future because if you're going to add in um, extra power supplies to boost it up you need to plan that cable size in from the start so whether you want to you know make your main bus at uh, a 3202 uh, which is a the 10 amp one um, that's the, the kind of it's from the outset really but if you've only got a four six eight foot layout you know small exhibition layout that might not be dcc you know it's only dc then um, 702 at 2 amps and 1602 at 4 amps I'm sure will be absolutely adequate but do a little bit of homework and to save buying the wrong cable. I also buy another cable and that's from Halfords the car shop because I can go there and buy a 5 amp cable or an 8 amp cable um, because you know sometimes sending away for 100 meter lengths of cable can be expensive and if I just need a short run then I will use that but I always make sure that the current I put through the cable is clearly less than the cable's rating. Okay, that took, took a long time to say that really, didn't it? There we go. It's been an epic video. I do hope you've enjoyed it. Um, it's a funny time of the world right now. Um, and hopefully, you know, you, you know, you stay safe and you, you know, probably lock your sales away in your railway room. Um, the Ale Alexandra Palace show was cancelled and every show that, you know, that seems to be coming up is cancelled for fear of this, with the current situation. So we kind of, we are where we are. I'll try to push out these videos every week um, to give you something to look forward to, perhaps. Um, so, you know, there we go, really. So I, I do hope you to stay, stay safe is, is the main thing and um, keep up your spirits and perhaps get on with some wiring of your layout, you know, as, as I'm doing. Um, if you need any, if you want any advice or whatever, then um, leave your comments uh, down below. And um, I thank my patrons as usual. And if you can afford the equivalent of $2 a month, you know, I'd welcome you to, uh, to join this community. Don't forget to subscribe. Subscribing is free. And there should be a video here and here. I'll see you next week. Take care. Stay safe. Bye-bye.